right. Guess who's back? Back, back again. Back again. 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 Tell your friends. I feel like how sick would have been for season five to start and you just like full on sent it with an Eminem rap. With a rap. Yeah. Well. It's with, not too late. It's not too late, but with, without <laughs> all late. of that, we are diving back in. This We're is season four? Five. Season five. Season five. The Wealthy Web Designer podcast. Yeah. Talking web design, talking today about how to become a booked out web designer in 2024. Yeah. First time saying 2024. Um, I know. That's crazy. Out loud, I feel like. We have a really good season, though. We had a really good season last season and it was the first one that we did it produced it's on youtube we're so freaking pumped but we like are up leveling and so i'm really excited for the season i hope that it's even better for you guys but let's just stop rambling and get into things right let's, let's talk about how to become a booked out web designer and i love this topic actually for the beginning of the year because it's very aligned with what we have even going on internally in the business because we just did a live call with our students inside the club, right? A hundred percent. Guess what the topic was? <laughs> two, two, three hundred people on talking. Yeah, it was so good. Setting goals, all the things. And the topic was how to become a booked out web designer in 2024, because I think that's probably everyone's main thing, right? Yeah. Everyone is like, all right, I need cl clients. I want to make money. Like, how 100%. do I do this? How do I fucking do this? So let's talk about it. How do we make money in 2024 as a web designer, right? Let's get into it. How do we do it? Well, I think that one of the coolest things to think about is your ideal client. So as a web designer, your ideal client, who's going to book you for a web, for a website, is also in the same exact mindset as you are right now. Mm -hmm. So if you are stepping into this new era, your new year, new you, you're trying to grow a business, you're trying to make money, you want to scale, you have all these dreams, you're setting intentions, right? So are your clients. So your ideal clients are probably also stepping into this year thinking, how do I grow? How do I book more clients? Yep. I want to scale to X, Y, and Z. I want to grow my email list, whatever your client is dreaming of, they're in the same boat. And so you can actually acknowledge that you guys are in a similar era together, your client and you. So speak on that. Know that right now your dream client is actually like waiting to invest. Yep. They just need to be fucking told to invest. They need to be told how their website's going to change their life, how their website can make them more money and book them more clients and grow their email list, all the things, all the above. And so I think knowing that like, if you have that fire within you, your client does too. 100%. And so it's time to just start marketing. Yeah. I feel like this is the year of marketing. It's always been around obviously, but I feel like a lot of the people, at least that I talk to, they think, I'll become a web designer. I'll become a service provider and I'll just like, it'll just fall in it'll my lap. Happen. Right. But it doesn't, you have to have a strong marketing plan. Like yeah. you have to have strategy in place and actually put yourself out there. And I think that's something that I really want to encourage everyone. Like if you could walk away from this episode and be Prompted, in one way. <laughs> prompted to do one thing, it's to just show up more because that is how you're going to actually grow and get the results that you want. Because I get DMs all the time of people being like, how do I book more clients? How do I grow? I really want to make more money. How do I do this? And I'll go to their profile and I'll be like, bro, what do you, what do you do? Are you a web designer? Yeah. I can't tell. And so that's like the biggest thing I recommend is just showing up creating a brand, creating almost like a persona, it's a like full experience. Yeah. Like you're a personality now, like get after it, like show people who you are mm -hmm. and why people should work with you. Because at the end of the day, there are so many web designers, there are so many service providers, but there are also so many fucking businesses mm -hmm. that need websites. And so it's just your responsibility to actually get in front of them. Right. Right. So what, when you think about being booked out, what does that, what does booked out even mean? Well, that's a good question. So being booked out means that your capacity is filled. Mm -hmm. Your glass of water is full. It's not half empty. It's not half full. It's full. <laughs> it's fucking spilling over. Exactly. And so 
If you're booked out, ideally you're in a position where you're questioning whether or not you should be outsourcing. And that's like the best position that anyone could be in is if they are actually booked out and they maybe even have more demand than what they're even able to take on. And now they're questioning, do I need a VA? Do I need a design assistant? Whatever it is, that is when you know you're booked out or you can be chilling. I mean, I was booked out for so long before I even outsourced and hired anyone because I wanted to experience what it was like to actually just be fucking busy and be so in the design in the business every day. And so I enjoyed that experience. And I actually think it made me a better leader and business owner in general, because I do think that there's this, I don't know. I feel like people, try to maybe outsource too quickly. Mm -hmm. They're like, Ooh, I'm booked out. This is my first month. I'm going to hire this. And then they don't ever actually experience what it's like to just be a really busy service provider. And I do think that there's a blessing in that and like learning how to manage and, and manage your time and all the things that are required of when you're really fucking busy and you look at your calendar and you're like, Oh shit. So do we feel (laughs) like being busy and being booked out are those separate things? I feel like they're similar, yeah. Honestly, because if you Booked are, that is like the sexy marketing term of saying being I'm really, really busy. busy. <laughs> no, that's actually really true, and I feel like that is. Well, it really depends because being booked out is based off of what your, you set your exactly. books to be. But I will say, I think that people assume like, I want to become booked out. I want to make $40,000 in my month and I'm just going to be like booking clients left and right, but not actually equating that to what that means once you book those clients Mm -hmm. and how busy you're going to be. And so I think that's the beauty in becoming a service provider and that you have the option. If If you're a mom and you have little kids at home and you only, let's say, have like evenings that you want to work on web design and with clients, should be that booked out. No, but that's booked out to you. If you take on two clients a month, but that's your capacity, but you book those two clients a month, you're booked out. Right. Get in line. Fucking book for January. Or I guess it's already January now, but February whatever it is. And so you set those guidelines, you set those rules of what you want. Mm -hmm. So when did you realize that you were booked out? What was it? Or what was the feeling that you were like, huh, I feel booked out because I, I look back at all of your experience and my clients experiences of what is the difference between finally hitting a peak busy season, but then calling yourself booked out to me sounds like you don't, you're not necessarily looking for more work. You're like, I'm at my cap. That's booked out to me. When did you feel like you were booked out? Mm, Well, I felt like I was booked out when I was closing clients for future months. I think that was like, okay, this is actually, I'm booked out right now. Um, But I think also it equated to how much money I was making. I had set goals. Like I almost had a booked out roster quota. And then I also had like a booked out money income income quota. And so when I made $20,000 in a month from web design packages, I was like, I'm done (laughs) throwing the towel. Now I'm booked out. And it was because I was like creeping up to actually being like capacity full. Like I couldn't have done any more. And what was that capacity full? Was it three VIP days a week? (sighs) Well, the time that I actually was like, I cannot fucking do this anymore. And it's actually what made website in a day be born into existence is I had 12 clients in the month and that was chaos for sure. Especially because I feel like I was still really in the learning phase. Mm -hmm. Like I was still learning how to time block and learning how to do all of these things. And even like onboarding and offboarding took so long. So even just each (laughs) individual, (laughs) each individual client, the experience as a whole just kind of took a really long time where now I can just knock that shit out. And so that's where website in a day was born. But I think that when I had 12 clients in one month, I remember thinking, this is great because this is going to be experience. I'm learning. I love all my clients. So I'm really appreciative. And that was one thing that I always wanted to like keep in my mind, even when I was like stressed out or overwhelmed or maybe like 
going down the road towards being burnt out, I always checked myself because it's like, I asked for this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be busy. I wanted to make those income goals. I wanted to become booked out. So now that I have it, I can't start bitching now. And so I just then always took that as just a lesson of like, okay, Becca, what do you actually want your business to look like? Like, Mm. what do you want it to look like? How busy do you want to be? Maybe you just need to raise your prices. Yeah, Maybe Maybe you're taking on and become your normal. Totally. But way more sustainable. Maybe you're being being booked out to where it's not sustainable at all. And you're leading yourself to burn out or maybe you're not, but okay. I want to take it back because if someone's listening to this and they're like, okay, great. You guys are talking all about like being booked out and shit, but how do I actually get booked out? How do I do it? What do you think? How do we get there? So starting from scratch, Becca and I are huge fans of beta launches. And so at the beginning, I would say we can even become booked out with our beta round, which means three, four, five clients, probably 30 to 50% of what we're actually going to be charging. So mm-hmm. if we're trying to get to 4,500 for a custom site, we're going to start at 2,500. Let's take on three, three clients, $7,500 coming into the account in exchange, in exchange, also getting three testimonials from those clients. Yep. And then when and we you're learn, learning, you're getting paid to learn. And Becca just brought up the biggest piece is that while you just got paid $7,500 to learn how to do three client sites, you also just got paid to learn how to be a service provider to clients and how to onboard and how to offboard. You also just got paid to learn web design because Becca and I can teach you how to do design, especially if you take CEO show it. But ultimately, you're not going to be a designer, then you still need to design websites for people to actually learn that real applied yeah. skill. It's going to be so the best way. For do a learn. freaking beta launch and let yourself get paid to learn all that you will. Yeah. No, it's actually funny because I even just got a DM from a student actually who sold out her beta, beta round $14,000 in eight days. It's January 8th, the day that this podcast is being filmed or January 9th. And so it's been nine days, $14,000 in a beta offer. So I get asked all the time, what is a beta offer? And it is literally going to be your best friend if you're launching your best friend. It is a discounted offer that you can promote in exchange for something. They are getting a deal because you are getting something, whether that something is that you are a complete beginner Mm -hmm. and that client experience might like actually suck for the client. It might be a little jank or not janky, but like clunky on the website build because it's your first one, or it could be completely different. And you are promoting this beta offer because it's your first client and you know that you're going to knock it out of the park and they are getting a special discount because you don't have a huge expansive portfolio that you can show them. Yeah, definitely. But then also you just mentioned the portfolio. When you launch a beta offer, you then can utilize those designs in yep. your portfolio and they're real legit money exchanged portfolio yeah. pieces. So it's the biggest win. Some of the biggest DMs that I get from students saying, I just made $24,000. I just made $21,000. I just made $14,000. It's all from a beta offer. So if on the topic of becoming a booked out web designer in 2024, if you need that little momentum, if you need that push, if you need to just get out there and do something, have it be this one thing, launch a beta offer. I actually, that actually brings up a good point because one of our students was recently messaging me wanting to launch a website in a day and wanting to actually relaunch because they had already launched it and, and kind of like heard crickets when Mm. they did it. And I said, huh, tell me a little bit more. They gave me the whole spiel as to where they were. And I said, huh, I think you actually need to relaunch this as a beta round. And we got to talking and I pointed out something really important. And it is that if you go into a beta round or you go into any new launch, when we think of us as marketers, it gives us something new to market. Mm -hmm. Even if we've already been offering web web design for clients and we've had a six week option, we've had an eight week option. Then last month we were throwing around having a one day option, but no one bit, no one, it really didn't hit. Now, if we go back onto our stories, back into kind of this like launch mode and we're launching this new beta service, we can maybe even rename it. We can give it a fun name. We can give it fun new messaging and talk about it in new ways that can still attract maybe those same people that were watching your story last week and didn't bite when it was being called something else. And so 
utilize that a beta offer almost launch. allows you to launch something new with it being the exact same thing. Yeah. It's also just good promo. Like it just allows exactly. you to have good promotional assets. And if you're a brand and you are trying to make sales, that means that you need to be promoting really regularly. So at the end of the day, you're really looking for any excuse or any reason to promote your offer yeah. that you can. I will say this one thing though about beta offers, don't overuse this offer yeah. because you really want to be strategic. Like what I would actually recommend is looking at the year, looking at what you want to launch. You want to launch a template shop. You want to launch a day rate and you want to launch, let's just say it's those two things, a day rate website in a day and a template shop. Your, your website in a day should be the one that gets the beta offer. Yeah. Your template shop doesn't need a beta offer. Instead, Digital a products wait do a wait list to a launch sale. Those are not the same thing. That's yeah. actually, you can promote them differently and they will, the, they'll be positioned differently where your template shop, no beta offer website in a day, beta offer. <laughs> and I think that that does go to show that if you're trying to sell a service, a beta is a perfect route. Totally. If you're trying to sell a product, a wait list and a similar discount yeah. will hit the exact same. And honestly, if you are thinking about launching your template shop and you haven't already launched a wait list, it can be done in 10, 15 well, minutes using Flowdesk, launch a landing page, write your paragraph, tag them into a wait list, and it can be that simple. Yes. I also would say that a beta offer. I don't know if an audience or a customer base would actually like a beta offer on something that they have to do themselves. Agreed. I don't think that that would land as well Agreed. where they want a beta offer that they're getting a service. They want oh, to understand. have you do the service. It's beta. It's a beta experience where having it be a beta template when they could really just go to like a different template shop right. and get it. That's not in beta. What's like a hundred bucks going to do. Like it's already so discounted that you just have to position it in a different way where it, you want it to be a launch sale. It's yep. like 25% off or 40% off, whatever you want to do at launch. I guarantee that would be more successful than a beta round. And you can even like achieve that same messaging where someone looks at the word or the messaging that you're using and it feels like they're getting a good deal. Like you could call it like a founder series or early access, something that implies that it's still right at the beginning and you're getting a good deal. Mm -hmm. But the word beta, I think is just a little bit different. Yeah, totally. Once you've launched that beta and we're thinking, okay, we just got three clients at $2,000. It's going to take us six to nine weeks to deliver those sites. This is where- Unless I, it's website in a day. Sure. This is where I feel like you actually get to pick up and get- on in route to becoming booked out is once you have those beta clients as clients, because then every single day you get to now show up as a web designer, you have your own clients and you can start marketing yourself as not being a hundred percent available because you've never done this before, but instead attractively available because you might have the opening for one new client next week. And then guess what? It gets booked. The next week we have yeah. one or two new openings. Do you feel like that is where like you would take it as once yeah, you have those couple? I mean, definitely that's the momentum that I feel like I always tell people just get over the hump of getting your first client yeah. because getting your first client is going to be the most difficult thing of all. Booking your first client is going to feel like a fucking nightmare. And then once you book your client, you'll be like, oh, that wasn't that hard. Right. I can do this again. And the best situation is if that client then has 10 other friends exactly. who are business owners who can refer you, you also can utilize their testimonial on your Instagram. So you're marketing them. You're also putting their new website on Pinterest. And so it becomes this like snowball effect yeah. where you can completely just take one client and blow up your business. I truly believe in that. I want to give everyone who's listening a couple of tips based off of exactly what you said to help actually get more clients and get more booked out because you just brought up a couple of things is one utilizing their network of trying to get referrals. Yes. There are a couple of things that you did in watching you get booked out that I feel like intensified that so much. Mm. And one of the big things is giving them an asset to post at the launch. Yes. And a lot For of you sure. guys who are listening to this might not have ever thought about this, but 
when you have a client that invests, let's say three to $10,000 and they finally get this website that just gets delivered, they want to share it. They want to show off this new investment. They want to show off what they've been working on. And ultimately they want to show off what you have been working on. How are they going to do that? Naturally, they're probably going to take a screenshot of the homepage. They're going to go on their story and share a, a link. Check out my new website. Guess who's going to check it out? Fucking no one. Literally four people. But then if you give them a beautifully designed on brand graphic that says site just launched or something that yeah. says, look at me and you give that to them and as they share a it gift of, Hey, I know you're going to want to share this with your people. Here's a graphic I just made for you. It's even branded for your new brand. Then they share that at the bottom of the caption. The natural thing to do is be like, shout out to my fucking amazing web designer, Sarah or Jessica, yeah. who just did this. And then you quite literally just created an ad of your work for that client to post. And it's like an endorsement of your design. So if you're looking for referrals, yeah, that is one of the biggest tips. Yeah, definitely. And also, I will say, if you want to become a booked out web designer in 2024, start or continue to invest into yourself yeah. because that is something that I see. Like I'll share things on my stories all the time. I have a student saying they just accomplished this huge win and people will come and be like, how do they do this? And I'm like, well, they've been working hard for the last six months, nine months. And they have, they've taken all my courses. They have the library. They've launched a day rate. They've launched a template shop. Like they they've, a photo shoot. they've they done all of these things. Exactly. Like they really went in and they were like, you know what? I'm going to commit to this. Yeah. I want it to be a career. If you want it to be a career, you can't just post willy nilly. Like it's not going to happen. And like not invest in yourself. Like there's a reason why people go to universities and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it. And obviously that's not what I'm recommending literally at all. Actually quite contrary if you know me, but you have to invest something. You have to invest, even if it's not your money, invest your time. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to quicken the results, invest your money because it will be the biggest payoff. 100%. If you commit into yourself, whether it's your time, money, or both, which is ideally because you'll just be able to execute what you want so much quicker. And that's what I see people literally having their mm. experience be where if you invest in your time and you just do it, take action, wake up every day and you go, what am I going to do? One thing today towards what I want towards my new business, towards mm. my new career, you have to do that or it's not going to ever get anywhere. So yeah, you have to commit to yourself. I feel like exactly. if, if there are any big takeaways this year, it's commit. like if commit, you're trying commit, to commit. become booked out, how can you do that if you're not committing to yourself at the very beginning? Yeah, hundred percent. I love that. Well, with that, we'll keep it short and sweet. This is the best first episode getting people ready to go. I'm so excited. If you are a student and you're in, in the club, you can now fill out a form and ask questions, which we're, we'll finish off this episode doing. We have a couple of questions because what we're going to do now is structure every episode where we go straight into web design hotline. And we ask your questions, our students questions who literally have things that they want answered. And we're going to be the place for them to get those answers. So let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So first question is, do you always suggest adding branding as a service as a web designer? That's a really good question. I actually get this a lot and I don't think it's necessary. I think that there, you should be able to, to some degree, create branding, whether that's really simple where it's just a color palette and custom fonts. You could even do a word mark logo, but you can create that cohesiveness. Yeah. That's what's the most important thing. Do you need to create an illustrated logo or an entire suite of logos? No, absolutely not. There are literal people that just do that, yeah. that don't have any web design skills. And so partner with them. If someone wants that, have someone in your back pocket that you can refer out to. You don't need to do that. What I always say is this is your business. Do what you want. Do what makes sense for you. Don't ever do something because someone told you to do it. That's not going to be sustainable. This is your business. Do what you want to do. Offer what you want to offer. Do what you want to do. And so. ultimately, like if I can just add one mm -hmm. thing onto that is because I've I've worked with so many web designers that are like, I don't offer this one thing, but and honestly, they always say, but I see Becca offer it. <laughs> and I say, well, first of all, doesn't matter. Second yeah. of all, 
The biggest thing is that you need to find clients that want what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because I saw you so true. grow, especially when you started launching a website in a day. This micro branding exercise that you were able to create colors, create fonts, create this little wordmark logo on your iPad all in this day while you're designing. Like it was this fucking wizardry thing. I realized that. I actually myself always thought that branding had to be included or that it was completely not included and that you would work with a brand designer separately. Mm. And everyone I was working with was like, how does Becca find people that just want that wordmark logo? Like everyone I want or everyone I work with wants like six different logo variations and all these things. And I was like, but why We're talking about such different clients Yeah, and finding people like use me as an example or use most people in the online space. They don't need a logo. Yeah. Like if it's their name, you don't need a logo. You need something cool that represents you and that like signals totally. you and is representable. Well, and a lot of the people, a lot of the time people over complicate and compensate yes. for what they need. And if you're a web designer, you now are an authority. You can tell them that's not needed yeah. unless it is needed. Of course there's a time and place for it, but I can think of some of the most like recognizable brands in the online space and they have wordmark logos yeah. and they have not changed in five years. Yeah. Like, you know, you just don't need it. So and that actually helps with the recognition is true. that they are consistent. Ex very true. Okay. How do you deal with unhappy clients? It's a good question, and it's definitely open-ended because each unhappy client brings so lots of unique pieces. I think that ultimately we want to strive for just making our clients as happy as we possibly can, but let's say one out of 50 to one out of 100 is going to be unhappy. It's just the way of the game. I think first... And I, I want to I want to let you actually answer this because I feel like you've had an easier time handling the unhappy clients than I have myself. First, you have to really hone in and align yourself in. Did you provide the best service that you can? Was there something that you did wrong or that was like yeah, reflect. a little bit at fault that you could reflect on and kind of gather that before you even respond or talk to the unhappy client? So I think there's a lot to be done before you even book that potential happy client. I think you can ask yourself, did I ensure that this person was actually a good fit? Did I ensure that this person actually knew what they were investing in? Did I ensure that we were a good collaborative partnership, yeah. you know, because you have to check out those things. And I think as you know, being completely honest, when you're just starting out and you want money, yeah. There's no, it's going to be hard to say now. Totally. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone yeah. has that where you're like, yes, yes, Literally. I fucking hate you, but yes, <laughs> like you're going to pay me $2,000 for this website for sure. A hundred percent. You know, it's totally normal, but also once you have a bad client, it's normally the time that you look back and you're like, damn, that $2,000 is not needed. And you're like, my, this bullshit. and you're like, my gut told me that there was a red flag. I knew I shouldn't have except that client. She gave me red flags off from the jump. That is that always how it is. So much. Oh my God. When I look back at our first couple of years, I felt like I had so many red flag clients. Oh yeah. And then so many red flag experiences. No, you totally like, know from the beginning. I'm like, Becca, so-and-so just like totally fucked me over. So-and-so just like ghosted me. And you're like, could have called that two weeks ago when they Seriously. did X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So I think having really clear boundaries and expectations from the beginning yep. and just really, you know, it's also just a learning experience. You're going to have a bad it client and just no like almost embrace it. Love it. You know, I think that that's one thing that we did differently and even the clients that I actually wanted to throw in the towel and quit because of, I was like, fuck them. I'm not going to let them run my yeah. shit. Like who are they in two years? I will never think about it again, unless it's like a funny thing, you know, which is actually funny. Cause right now I'm doing a series on like one of my worst client experiences. Yeah. And even then I was like, this is crazy. This is so shitty, but I know that I'm going to learn. And I know in a few, in a few months, even this isn't going to affect me. Yeah. So I'm just going to know that like there's lessons in this and I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to learn. And last thing with the unhappy client is as a business owner and as a service provider, your energy 
especially if you're a business model like we're teaching that you have mm -hmm. to show up on social media to become a booked out web designer to get clients. You have to be in this like energetic sanctuary, I guess, if you will. And the second you realize that a, a client is unhappy, their unhappiness is of jeopardy to your energetic sanctuary in terms of creating content and moving yeah. your business forward. And so after having truthfully a lot of unhappy client experiences over the past five years, like we've dealt with them, your energy is worth more money nine times out of 10 than the amount. No, worth more than money. Right. Worth more than the money that is typically the annoyance or in the exchange that you're going back and forth with. So really remember, if you can nip this in the butt, if you can respond back and just shut it yeah. down, whatever it needs to happen, fucking end that shit. So For that sure. you can focus on making money. For sure. 100% agree. All right. Well, if you liked those, we'll be doing those at the end of every episode. If you're in the club, if you're a student, remember every student get that gets access to the club. It's like our little hub creative portal for web designers specifically on the same exact path and road that you are. So if you have questions, drop it in the form, get them answered on the podcast. And if you're not a student yet, drop them in a comment or a review on the podcast. We would love it if you could help us out with a five-star review so that this can be amplified, shared with even more people that can take this knowledge in and actually change their life with it. Yeah. We've seen so many people change their entire lives, including ourselves. And so we are here every day showing you guys what's possible. If you want to come hang out, it's I am Becca Luna on Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Or Willow Kai on also all of the things. Yes. And with that, we will see you guys soon. Bye.